pretty much uh, uh, no longer the the, uh, the argument they're they're using. They're now uh, in negotiations with uh, Metra to possibly use uh, the rail track, uh, rail freight rail for passenger service. So it it's so the, the star line is not dead, but it's also uh, not very vibrant either. Uh, the rail traffic increases in Will County. Uh, Will County will receive, uh, let's see here, uh, Joliet it is basically the the, uh, the ground zero for all, all of this. Uh, everywhere else along the, the rail, uh, you will, there will be also increases in rail traffic, but not to, the, to, these, to this degree. Right now, uh, if the rail traffic between the uh, East Joliet Yards and Joliet uh, up through Plainfield into, into Naperville currently sees about 18 trains per day, which averages one train every hour, hour 20 minutes. Uh, hour and 20 minutes, I'm sorry. And what they're looking at, uh, once all the improvements are made, uh, after CM purchases the, the, the rail, rail line, would be 45 trains per day, from 18 to 45. So they could see one train every 32 minutes. And these trains would be much longer. Uh, these trains would be running uh, about 9,000 uh, 9, feet long, which is almost two miles long of train. Now, the speed on here is not exactly uh, lickety split either because of all the twists and turns. So we're, we're talking maximum 45 mile an hour uh, uh, movement. So yeah, all the crossing boundaries, yes. Uh, the south of the East Joliet Yards and moving eastward into uh, Cook County, uh, they currently see six trains per day, which is one train every four hours. You can live with that for the most part. Uh, now they're looking at 28 trains per day, which is one train less than every 50 minutes. Again, the 9,000 foot trains instead of uh, the, the shorter, uh, uh, they're running about 4,000 foot trains now. So, so all those trains, those longer trains, running more and more. In Will County, we've got uh, 52, 52 at grade crossings. Very few uh, grade separated crossings. Uh, the most well, populous ones would be uh, Cedar Road uh, in New Lenox at 22 or 21,000 vehicles per day. And uh, oops, there it is and Illinois 126 at 16,000 uh, vehicles per day. Uh, and then there's uh, between uh, 9,000 and uh, 3,000 uh, vehicles per day uh, throughout the, the entire the entire segment. And uh, I have not looked at South Coast County, but uh, they're very, very similar. Uh, there are, uh, I did, uh, on a regional basis, I took uh, just the, the federal and state highways that have ad grade crossings. And so in Lake County, there's uh, 19,000 vehicles per day, uh, looking at trains every 45, 45 to 50 minutes. In South Cook, US 30, 27,000 vehicles per day. Uh, uh, Dixie Highway, Governor's Highway, no, that's Cicero, let's call it Cicero there. Uh, both at uh, 21,000. Little Harlem Avenue, only 8,000 vehicles per day. <laughs> but it's also right by the uh, uh, what are they calling it now? The, the um, First Midwest Amphitheater is right there. Uh, and again, uh, at 126 in downtown Plainfield, uh, 32 minute uh, trains per day. Uh, and then Ogden Avenue, which is also uh, just, just north of Will County and into Cook County, uh, has uh, about 34,000 vehicles per day. And that, and that is also at, at Great Crossing. They, uh, CN has uh, offered to spend uh, 30 to 40 million dollars for grade separated projects. Uh, they estimate that would be three or four uh, sep grade separating project projects. Uh, we don't think so. Most uh, just that 30 to 40 million would probably be used on Ogden Avenue alone uh, because it is uh, basically a, a five lane cross section. And who knows if it would need to go up and over or under? Who knows where it would go? Uh, now, uh, if you're at the last last presentation, uh, this this information has changed. What I didn't realize is, uh, I found out later 
that uh, CN had a typo. Uh, they were mentioning uh, they were having uh, uh, hazmat car loads on a uh, per annual basis. No, nope, they meant a per day basis, on a daily basis. Book. <laughs> Oops, big typo. So I just naturally use their typo because that's their information. Um, what they're looking, what now uh, EJ&E uh, handles about uh, 45 to 50 car loads on a daily basis, uh, which is about 7% of the, uh, their total freight, uh, which would be uh, LP, uh, mostly uh, whatever uh, uh, the anhydrous ammonia and all that uh, fun stuff that, that we they use every day uh, let's see what they're looking for looking at uh, when the FCM uh, takes over uh, there'll be about 300 400 car loads of hazardous materials running through uh, which would would be 90% uh, of the total uh, freight traffic and to give you that uh, perspective, uh, right now Chicago, the, the Chicago bound hazmat that they run through through their their, their current system uh, would be uh, right now they're running at 12 percent of the total freight. Uh, if CN uh, takes it off and puts on on the EJ and E, uh, the Chicago bound would no longer would basically see less than one percent of of hazardous materials. Uh, on the CN lines. We can only talk about CN lines. We don't know what the, what the other uh, lines are doing. Uh, the national average is 10% is of hazardous materials uh, being being carried. That does not include uh, uh, nuclear waste. It's only has, has what they consider hazardous materials. Nuclear waste is a whole different category, and they're kind of secret about that. Uh, what is going on? Uh, uh, Will County has adopted a resolution to oppose this uh, uh, proposed acquisition, primarily because of the uh, the hazardous, hazardous materials uh, being uh, brought through through the county, uh, and also the 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 direct impacts on the surface road uh, transportation system. Uh, it would be it would be nice to uh, say that okay maybe. The county, the county, the communities can handle some train, uh, some train traffic, but it's the the the, the main thought was the, the threat on the uh, emergency services because each and bisects a lot of these communities. Now all of a sudden you have to have a duplication of services for emergency services if a train just happens to stop in the middle of the downtown for whatever reason, and it would be happening more and more frequently. And that they that there was just something that uh, they could not ex accept. Uh, DuPage and Will Counties and uh, uh, Lake County, uh, Illinois, and I believe Lake County, Indiana, uh, we are, uh, will formally uh, join us as well. Uh, what we're organizing is a more regional uh, group of opposition. Uh, uh, the Barrington uh, communities in uh, Northwest Cook and uh, Lake Counties uh, are on board as well. Uh, we decided to call ourselves TRAC. Uh, the regional answer to the CN is what we're calling ourselves, and uh, we're doing a, uh, uh, hopefully have, have another meeting uh, at the end of this month. I'll uh, give Mr. Lamy all the information uh, if you would like to attend. There hasn't been an official date or, or time or even location other than possibly Aurora. Uh, right now, what the officials the official approving body is uh, the uh, Surface Transportation Board of the U.S. DOT. Uh, they're the ones that have to uh, give the, the the okay, and they look at it uh, from uh, basically a competitive standpoint, a labor standpoint, and a safety standpoint. And uh, and under the, the it's not going to adversely affect competition. It will not adversely affect labor. Uh, it will, however, possibly affect safety with regard to uh, the environment. We don't know what a uh, what a uh, quadrupling the freight traffic will do to the environment with uh, the diesel uh, fumes being generated by the trains themselves, plus the uh, vehicle delay uh, at, at the crossings. Uh, we don't know what, what what the impacts are going to be. Uh, this is also new information from uh, my presentation. Uh, Previously, for those who have seen it, uh, that it 
we were told uh, by the Surface Transportation Board they have never seen a project go uh, shorter than 12 months. 12 to 18 months was the time frame that they were looking at, starting, uh, we'll say, January. So we were looking at possibly seeing a, a, a draft of an environmental impact statement uh, April of 2009. Well, the CN is willing to pay a lot of money. The consulting firm uh, HDR uh, uh, was selected by CN, but it was pre basically pre-approved by the Surface Transportation Board. Surface Transportation Board said, here is a list of consultants that you can choose from. You will pay them. And it will be a basically a pass-through through the uh, STB. The, the, the CN doesn't see doesn't see anything. They just pay the bill, pay the bill, pay the bill. Uh, well, they're willing to pay a big bill because HDRA has about 200 people working on this project, and they're going to get it done in nine months. We think they're going to get, get a, a uh, STB is saying late September or late summer. I'm, which to me means uh, late <coughs> late September, probably early October. We'll, we'll see a draft of the EIS. And all this information can be found on our website, worldcountylanduse.com. We have a link to a uh, information clearinghouse, uh, which would have uh, a link to the official uh, website that STB has, plus all the resolutions that we have, plus uh, uh, information that you, you've seen here uh, in the form of a what we call white paper. Okay. So. Now. Mr. Washington's question. <laughs> um, it's more a statement than a question. If, if any of you are wondering why this is brought before us, the only line we have running through Kentucky County is right outside. And the amount of traffic that he has pointed out to you that is bypassing, would be bypassing Chicago, is all going to be funneled out this line and we have many many crossings as well that would be impacted including Mantino as well as right straight through Kankakee it's almost as if we're going to have continuous train traffic without any brakes so that to me is extremely significant concern uh, concern for safety uh, as well as traffic uh, problems Thank you. My question is, if they, the rail system is here to stay, and it's going to keep going, and it's going to alleviate a problem with trucks that we now have. The thing of it is, what is it that we can put in place to improve these crossings? Rather than fight them and say, we don't want you doing it, I'd rather say, okay, you can do it, but we've got to have these type of conditions in place so we can live with it. Yeah, we're talking 9,000 foot trains. Yeah. Uh, I realize that. Over, those are, that's, that's just rural counties at grade crossings. South Cook also has uh, basically the same ratio, uh, and, uh, and uh, DuPage not so much there, because uh, 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 basically, the rivers parallel uh, EJ and E there, so there's the bridge crossings are a, li a little bit more, are the crossings are a little bit more limited because of not only you have to bridge the rail, you also have to bridge the river, so they just do them all at once. So there's uh, fewer crossings uh, in DuPage County, but what it, that's what we're what we're looking at is okay. Who's, who's going to be the haves, who are going to be the have-nots is going to be our question. Who are we going to say you cannot have that great crossing? Or who, I'm sorry, who, who's not going to get a great separated crossing? Uh, New Orleans will need one, Frankfurt will need one, uh, Volcano will need one, uh, Joliet will need one, Crest Hill will need one, Plainfield will need uh, probably two or three, just to have reasonable traffic flow uh, through, through our communities. And, uh, and one of the points I would also like to make is uh, it, it, it's also the, uh, your, the train traffic that you have coming, coming through here, but also your your residents going through uh, South Cook, going through uh, Will County to get to destinations north, they'll, they will have, unless they're taking uh, 
57 all the time, they're going to have problems is getting through. Has this uh, any connection with container traffic? The, this has everything to do with container traffic. Do with it. All right. Um, have to, the study, does it take into effect what truck traffic would be on the roads without? We, we do believe, if you believe it will have that, that those numbers, yes. And also the conditions of the road with all the truck traffic. I mean, I see the rail in the U.S. is going to be increasing because of the cost of fuel and uh, number of trucks in the road and the containers and all this. Um, it's, it's almost like you have to choose the worst of two evils. Right. I, the, we don't know to what degree the, uh, how, how far uh, geographically they're going to be looking at, at between uh, truck traffic and train traffic, what, what scope they're going to be uh, looking at uh, from that perspective. Uh, the, the route that they're going to be taking is uh, CDM is opening up a new port uh, a, uh, uh, on the west coast of uh, British Columbia, uh, Port Prince Rupert, and all so they're going to basically bypass Vancouver uh, and take a new port just uh, to, to the north. And it's solely dedicated to cargo containers and ship those cargo containers that are going to the U.S. <coughs> through Chicago uh, to the Kirkyards, either ship them eastward or ship them south to Memphis and uh, recontainerize them there and uh, uh, ship them to uh, wherever they need, need to go. Is there also a port going in Mexico that would come up from the south? I've heard that as well, but that has not uh, not that's not an official uh, position that we that we've gotten from anybody other than uh, uh, outside sources. Okay, is Chicago support this? I don't know what the uh, city of Chicago has done, but Cook County has has filed a resolution of support because of the, their their train traffic is going to severely decrease. Right, that's what I would assume. Any other questions? Uh, we're going to go with Mr. Scholl first, and then Mr. Burns. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> Senior. Uh, my my question is: Is there anything in state statutes where uh, the railroad must go over grade uh, based upon the number of cars. No. Uh, there's nothing of that nature. Nope. There is a, isn't there a law though regarding uh, delay how long the gates are down delay. the delay? Yeah. Uh, it is stationary trains. That's right. As long as they're moving. As long as they're moving, they can stay down. Uh, Ms. Hertzberger. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The 45 to 50 carloads of hazardous material, I, I kind of missed that. Is that now or is that, that, is, what, what, that, is, what, that is what the eg and &E traffic currently generates. Okay, so what will it increase to? On eg and &E, it would increase to, to 300 to 400 carloads per day. And that's, there's there's some on every Pretty train? Pretty much every train, yes. yes. Okay. You'd rather have them on rail than on the road. Yeah. Any others? There's a difference when they go up, they go up. <laughs> well, Mike. You may have missed it. Uh, you mentioned the rail yard in Indiana. Yes. Is the object of this reorganization. What is going to happen at that rail yard? Is that just a staging area? Or? It'll be what they call a hump yard, basically. Uh, split the trains up uh, that come in to do, re reorganize them into other trains to, to get them Place to, live. to a, a, a different des <laughs> destination. That would not be the intermodal site that's being discussed. No. Where is their intermodal site, or are they? They don't have an intermodal. They have an announcement. There, okay. Well, there's talk. That yeah. There's talk. There's that been if this happens, there'll be an intermodal. That would be the terminus for a lot of this traffic. We have not heard anything about the intermodal. Uh, we, we, we've heard the same rumors. We don't know if they're true. Yeah. What county is the king of intermodals, by the way? Yes. Right. Is uh. This is, has nothing to do with this discussion, but is Will County going to upgrade uh, Route 45? It's not their road. Oh. <laughs> 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 I don't district yes. one. I <laughs> oh, not me. No, I, <laughs> <laughs> okay, any other questions? All right, we have a motion. Uh, Mr. Washington. Makes a motion. Makes a motion. Yeah to support this resolution sent yes. on to the county board. Yes. Is there a second? 
Okay. Second by Mr. Tripp. Any discussion? I would really think we're between a rock and a hard place. Yeah. You know, something like this. Yeah. Uh, can of work. I mean, if, if uh, Will County has developed these intermodal sites and now they're having to deal with the results of them, right? This this, this has absolutely nothing to do with an intermodal yard. This is all through traffic. Yeah. There, there will be no stops. There is no economic uh, benefit that, that, we're, that we've been. Sure. There is no in a economic benefit that, that we have been apprised of. There is no intermodal yard associated with this. It is just traffic running through our community uh, to a different end destination. Kind of like what happened to us on the intermodal yards that happened in Bullock County. <laughs> Sorry. Ms. Hertzberger, we're speaking to the motion. Speaking to the motion. Should, should we make a motion right now? In, or wait for that study to be done. I mean, it, they're doing a study right now that will show what, how it will alleviate truck traffic or it will, or, you know, what in, in environmental impact it'll have. Um, should we wait for that? Or should we... Give a response to that? I mean, I'd like to. Well, to... The environmental impact will uh, advise the Surface Transportation Board as to what conditions that they can uh, place upon the, the railroad. Uh, we're hoping that it would be uh, at uh, rate separating crossings uh, at uh, specific key locations. Uh, and in order for CN to proceed, they would have to uh, build those at, out of their, their own pocket. So we don't, but again, it could also be, no, just go ahead. Would you support it if the grade crossing, if you have the grade crossings you wanted? Probably not. The, the, has, the, the, the county board uh, is very keen on the, the increase of hazardous materials uh, being, being brought through the county. But, but I, can't, I can't speak for, for the county board. I'm, I'm, I can only say what they, what they put up in, in their resolution. Hazardous materials. I we deal with that all the time. I really think if you're going to go after a, a reason to stand that would be the grade crossings, not so much the hazardous materials. Personally, I agree with you. That's what the county board said. <laughs> uh, speaking to the motion, Mr. Bosser. Follow-up question again. Uh, I guess I question the analysis that uh, rail traffic out here will increase or decrease depending on what happens with this uh, acquisition. It seems to me the, the the amount of rail coming down from Canada wherever is still going to be the same. It's still going to be heading south in some fashion. The bottleneck is in Chicago, and that's what they're trying to deal with. But once it's through Chicago, will it not continue down this direction? What's the alternative? Where are they going to go with all these trains? Uh, do you do do you have an alternate solution to for for the CM? Uh, status quo is the alternate. But status quo isn't going to be status quo. Well, more trains are coming. Uh, continually, they're going to go somewhere. They will. Uh, not necessarily, because the. Uh, because of the what they're what they're proposing is not just uh, purchasing of EG&E, &E, which is currently a uh, single single track with <coughs> sidings. What they're proposing is basically double tracking the entire EG&E &E right of way, uh, which which uh, allows the quadrupling of, of freight traffic. So if there is if it status quo is maintained, <coughs> the single track single tracking and and just the, uh, the the traffic that it can generate as a single track will will, will remain. Well, there's no discussion of double tracking in our county as part of this proposal, is it? That's my knowledge. Even though that we're talking uh, now, I would say it's not part of this proposal because it does not involve each &E. uh, Ms. Hertzberg wants to jump again. No, I just think we are jumping the gun on this a little bit. I mean, I'd like to have a little bit more information on how it's going to impact our county and 
to see what the studies show we when, before I, I support a resolution. Um, this is it's kind of vague as we I don't know, Mikey, you can give a presentation on how it's going to impact us more or um, by the time that the Surface Transportation Board gives their opinion, we won't have lost any chance to make an impact on their decision. You have already lost that on the opportunity. Officially. Officially, you have lost that. Uh, in, order, in order to become a, uh, a party of record, you must have had submitted uh, your letter of intent with the Surface Transportation Board to be a uh, party of record. Uh, I believe it was by uh, February 1st, I think it was. And so basically everybody, you can, you can comment uh, on the uh, the draft EIS, you have that that ability, but you cannot be a uh, an official party of record uh, with the Surface Transportation Board with regard to their uh, decision making. Any other comments? We have a motion on the floor. Are you ready for the question? Yeah. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carried. Karen, what side of bed do you get up on this one? The young side. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Emily, Emily <laughs> got a post. Go knock and see you trying to have a joint crossing. It says 1030 to 1045. There will be a train here, but they don't run on that. No, they don't. They don't run on schedule that. You get one, you get one delay in the back of everything all day long. And I need to no, it's called progress. <laughs> we do nine thousand foot. Is that they break them in the fours. That's currently the original rate cost of three thousand four foot trains on each end. So when there is a train, it's much shorter. Much less the delay. Two hundred yard train. It's going on. Thanks, Colin. We get that. Yeah, I got my key. Yep. Where are we at? Uh, we're at uh, 2009 Unified Work Program. Just a minute, we're changing the tape. I'll tell you, Joe. Great. Never mind. You know, what yeah, I knew it was a matter of fact. It takes about 10 minutes to tell. Sure. You know, yeah. It's about a three legged pig. Oh, no. You can't eat a good pig all at one time. Ah, that's the joke. That's Sorry, we get it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been short. <laughs> <laughs> that was the new slide, but we went. Sure you just tell the, the punchline. The, the interesting thing today. about that is I was on a cruise where Jerry uh, Van Dyke was the entertainment. He told it. My wife told it at dinner, and we went to the show, and Jerry Van Dyke told it. You really told it? Well, well, that'll teach you. Yeah. I mean, it was just a coincidence. Uh, that'll teach you to have lunch with Jerry Van Dyke. Here we go. We're we taking the pig out of the conversation. We're pushing record. Okay, Mr. Every year we come to you and tell you uh, what we're going to do in the next year of the transportation program. And uh, this year is no different. And you have in front of you the Unified Work Program for FY 2009, which is the official work program of your transportation department. That would be Gemini, that's your transportation department. Well, I'm an intern, we hired Monday, so I guess we just decreased our size by 50%. Uh, by and large, what we do is in the area that's shaded in green in the urbanized area. Uh, a lot of things we do that go beyond that boundaries, but 80% of what we do probably is inside the urbanized area. There's a federal mandate for us to do that inside the urbanized area and receive federal transportation funds, just so you know that. Uh, let's go through the document quickly. You've already seen one slideshow is probably enough for you for one day, but I'll, I'll make this short. Uh, go to the first table that, that's in there on page uh, whatever. Nine. Every year we have a... <laughs> I love it. It's like the man here. That's the first time I've heard a bird that matches that song. That's pretty impressive. Every year we have a contractual requirement with IDOT to produce a unified work program, and that's telling them what we're going to do the next year. Uh, this is what we do every year. This is, and we don't spend a whole lot of money doing this because it doesn't change much from year to year. We produce this document, we give you this document so you have an idea of what's going on. Page 10 is the Transportation Improvement Program. This is another one of the things we have a contractual obligation to produce every year. 
every uh, dollar that's spent in, in federal money inside the urbanized area has to be listed in the TIP. Whenever we finish this year's copy, we'll bring it to you and show you what all the transportation projects for the next four years are. I'm sure you can't wait for the, the, that Exciting. presentation to come. It's important. It is. You know, we, we, we hopefully spend tra federal transportation money on the most important things. And we, you know, right. we'll let you know what those most important things are the next year. Page 11, uh, we have every four years an uh, obligation to produce a long-range transportation plan that looks out 30 years. Uh, next year is one of those one of those four-year <coughs> updates. We're going to spend a lot of our time doing that, uh, and, and you'll be involved in that process. We'll come to you probably a couple times during next year to ask for some input on that. You know, rail traffic, truck traffic, all those kinds of things. The next page, uh, page 12, is a transit technical assistance. We do two things in transit in the county. We, we are the I, I have the frog in my pocket, the we. Uh, I'm the transportation planner, transit planner for the Metro, River Valley Metro Mass Transit District. And you can probably uh, notice by the paper yesterday, we've had some fairly uh, long discussions with a lot of people about funding with, uh, with River Valley Metro. And hopefully those things are gonna be resolved pretty quick. Uh, those same uh, negotiations happen for our rural transportation service which is provided by show bus. If and when we find out we've got additional money, and we hope to find that out pretty quick, uh, we'll come back to you and ask, what do you want to do with rural transportation? We haven't had a whole lot of money over the years to do that. Uh, if we do get state funding for that, that's going to open up some kind of new and interesting and relatively exciting things to do in the rural transit area. We won't be coming out begging for money anymore to the townships if we actually get state funding. How much are you? How much are we looking to get? We think we're going to get $370,000 a year, and then it goes up 10% each year. We've never been funded by the state for rural transit. I don't have any idea why. It's in the transit bill that was passed in January. Whether, whether that money actually gets allocated is up to your governor. Your governor. <laughs> Not mine. Yeah. That's right, George. I'm sorry. Not mine, man. <laughs> We're having some difficulties getting the money that was authorized in the bill actually allocated. Somebody has to give me a civics lesson on how that's supposed to work because I don't understand. Thought I did, but apparently I don't. Page 13, we've got a section on public involvement. We go to a, a, a ton of meetings a year. Uh, that's Van Mill, that's me, that's Jim, that's uh, Dell, that's uh, anybody that goes to a meeting during the year, this, we write that off under public involvement. Um, this is an important thing for us. We, this is how we find out what the public says they want. Whether that's actually what they want sometimes is a different thing we've discovered over the years. Uh, page 14 is planning services. We do a number of things that are be above and beyond uh, the MPO requirements. We do traffic counting, although we haven't done much in the last three years. Uh, we do accident information. We're, we're doing a major effort on crash data recording. That's the only thing, the only thing the intern that we've hired is going to be doing. Uh, we do some uh, assistance to local units of government on the Safe Rides to Schools program, and then we do some census data also. Uh, and as, if you folks find something else you think is important for us to do, we'll add that into the work program. The next, uh, page 13 is graphic support. That, in essence, is Mr. Skimmerhorn, a piece of his time. Page 16, secretarial support. That is a piece of Ms. Michelle Sadler. And the program administration, Mike Van Mill and I do a lot of that during the year. I'll try to explain on, on page 18, we build back the state uh, some indirect costs uh, for rental, for benefits, things like that. Uh, we've paid our local share to match the federal money over the years out of this indirect cost category. We've never spent a dime on local share. We've always been able to build it back to the state in terms of indirect costs that they get from us working. Uh, page 19, we buy some computer equipment supplies. There's some travel expenses. We have a website I hope you're aware of. Uh, there's some public notice the requirements that we have and on page 20 there's a new thing that we've got this year that i'll make sure you're aware of uh, we've had some difficulty with uh, our federal and state advisors i guess over the last couple years uh, and we put some money in the last line item on that page 20 we're we're funding we're budgeting twenty five thousand dollars to hire some consultants to help us uh, deal with those federal agencies I never used to have problems with this but now we do so we're going to hire some people that have specialties in that area to help us develop a long-range plan. And then the rest of the document is some funding tables about uh, how much federal and local total budget for the department is $253,000.
the total federal funding on that is 162,000 plus 39, $200,000 well. Any questions on the program? What we do, what we don't do? You put together pretty books. Thank you. Do you need a, uh, any kind of motion on this? This is just for information. Yeah. The document's approved by the policy committee of the uh, of the MPO. It doesn't necessarily have to be approved by you folks. We thought it was important that you knew what we did. Uh, so if you've got a question about something, you can you know, come to us and say, isn't this some of the things you do in the MPO? <coughs> Mr. James. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Out of all these pages that shows the cost and funding and everything, if all of a sudden we had to tighten our belt, which one of these would be the one that would be less painful to eliminate? Well, it's totally funded out of federal money, and it's, it's written into the federal transportation bill. So there's, as far as I can tell, there's no belt tightening ever going to happen. It, in other words, where it says here local funding we're not involved in? We don't spend a dime in local money to provide that local match. We bill the state back for indirect services. I got you. Okay. Thank you. In essence, it's a soft match, even though it isn't. Gotcha. No. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you for the presentation. Yeah. Is there any other, any old business? <coughs> any new business? Mr. Mr. James. Come in, Mr. Thank you. Okay. I would like to see us revisit this uh, TIF area stuff again i think uh, karen hit on something uh, i i have a tendency to believe that it is sometimes being abused and misused and i didn't i supported it today basically because of the fact that now is no time to pull the rug out from under somebody once you've been doing things that way for so long but i'm a little bit concerned as to exactly how much abuse we can get out of this program and whether or not we can tighten it up so everybody understands up front that hey just because you're next to it and you want to start something apply for it and it'll be rubber stamped uh, i don't like that atmosphere at all that we're working on because all projects are good projects if they're generating you know income or jobs but some of them really are pet projects where we're just sort of helping somebody along and, and I think we're leaving ourselves open for abuse and I and I think we ought to take a look at the video. Delbert, can you uh, can you do that? Check for abuse in the petition. <laughs> I will forward that request to Mr. Van <laughs> oh, well, and I'll put that down for the next meeting. Okay. All right. Are we doing all business? Yes we're doing all business. I had a question. Um, somebody asked, Bob asked uh, Jamie about the delegation agreement. No, no. yeah. But he, he used a different, he said the waste. waste. It's all the waste. waste it's all the But separate. I would like to ask about the delegation agreement. Um, They're both at the state's attorney right now. Right. And what was his response to that, Bob? I mean, I, I would like to get it here. I mean, I would like to get it done. So can we? Put that on the agenda yes. and get it pushed, please. And the solid waste plan. We would like to have Mr. Boyd attend the next meeting, if possible. Yes. And we should give him a, a deadline here. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all those in favor of sending Rocks Karen to the state's attorney's office. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be glad to go. Uh, go ahead. <laughs> okay. Would you forward that on to Mr. Van Mill and Mr. Skimmer? <laughs> Any others? Old business. Any new business? Motion to adjourn and be in order. Yes. So, so, motion by Mr. Walsh, second by Mr. Mark. Not all in favor say aye. 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 aye.